Along a very long street, there is a particular house. And in that house, there is a particularly long bed. In that long bed sleeps a particularly long dog named Uli. Uli, a particular dog of sorts, lives there in that house with her family and friends. There is Mr. Fox. Good day, my lady. And the weasel. Good day, if you can call it that. Dr. Vacuum. <laughs> the red chair. And of course her parents, Uncle Dad and Uncle Mom. Now it should be said that by most standards, Uli lives a wonderfully privileged life. Each morning she sleeps in, letting the sun get up hours before her. Once awake, Uli is carried to her toilet, after which she casually lays with red chair and sunbathes the day away. Once the sun falls in the sky, Uli is carried downstairs by her parents, where she watches the moving picture and of course falls asleep. Oftentimes, Uli will sleep so deeply that she is carried upstairs to bed by her parents, where she will wake the next morning and live her life of luxury all over again. It would seem as though Uli's life is perfect, but at last it is not. There is but one problem. The food. These atrocities will not stand, mate. We can do better than this. You don't mind me politely interjecting. I politely disagree. Milady, your parents work hard for your kibbles, and as such you should learn to enjoy them. They're all good for you after all. <laughs> You're as smart as your stitching is tight. Uli in the farm pug. She's a purebred dachshund. I demand she eat like the queen she is. And as your protectorate, I protest you eating this. But milady, what will you eat? Think of it like truffle hunting, except the truffles are made by rabbits. Not bad. Strong oathy notes. They're really most right in late autumn, but these will do. But milady, though these truffles may be the candy of the forest, they have no vitamins. But Mr. Fox's warning went unnoticed, and so began Uli's quiet culinary protest. Each day her kibbles would sit in her dish, while Uli and the weasel would scavenge outside for new rabbit truffles. Now it didn't take long for Uli's parents to become alarmed and notice that something was wrong. First, the parents tried new food dishes. You could tie a ribbon around a rat tail all day long doesn't make it a golden retriever. We can hold out for better. But it was no use. The parents tried every kibble and bit they could find. A kibble by any other name still tastes like peasant's food. We can hold out for better. But it was no use. They tried a bit of cheese. This isn't even aged two months. Look here at the consistency. It's clearly made with pasteurized milk. We can hold out for better. But it was no use. Then they tried deli meat. <laughs> At least silver properly with the fresh baguette and bear mustard. We can hold out for bear. And it was no use. So in a moment of desperation, the parents went to the butcher and found the finest sirloin they could. They dusted it with salt and quickly seared the steak in a cast iron skillet to a perfect medium rare. They finished the steak with a square of parmesan butter compote and, for a touch of green, a side of parsley. Once completed, they served the five-star dish on a glass plate from the south of France and waited nervously. Hmm, looks like a somewhat acceptable effort. A little overdone for my taste, but... Uh, overdone? Milady, this feast is a fitting tribute for your greatness. I implore you, indulge in this just once. Don't listen to the way, Joe. I would add, I don't smell any truffles. It's clearly not a French dish without bitter shaved truffle. But Uli's stomach was speaking louder than the weasel and the hungry dog gave in eating the whole dish, including the parsley, in what could be a record time. After finishing the feast, the blissfully full dog pulled herself to Red Chair, where she fell into a deep slumber. Her slumber was in fact so deep that she slept right through to the next day. Come on, mate, let's take it again, let's chow it out. Milady, it's too much. Milady, the Shire is concerned for your well-being. You need vitamins, not more steak. Uli knew Mr. Fox was right. Steak was people food. Uli needed to eat wiener dog food. So in that moment, a small miracle happened. The little dog walked over to the corner of the kitchen, away from the steak and next to her old food of dried kibbles sat down and let out the quietest of barks. <coughs> this clear white flag of surrender was the end of Uli and the weasel's protest, the end of the rabbit truffles, 
the beginning of a happier dog.